Hi friends, I am Joel John J from Joel John J YouTube channel, and here got Harish Chandra Anandram sir for us again for speaking about research proposal writing. And for people who are looking at YouTube, if you want to uh, take some notes, uh, you can use the, the screenshot option in your mobile phone, and you can uh, take photos of the screens with your uh, mobile phone. Because SR has prepared a lot of slides for us. And people who are listening on podcast, I will suggest you to look at the YouTube channel to see the slides as well. So that that also has a lot of insight and information. And uh, if you people on YouTube, if you want to hear this message alone as uh, when you are at, the, at your gym or when you are cooking or doing some other activity or when you are traveling but not driving, so at that time you can uh, use the podcast. And also press the more tab and see Sarah's, Sarah's contact number is there. For those who want to contact Sarah about uh, uh, for your uh, for more information or getting some uh, getting his free ebook for free, Sarah is giving a free giveaway for viewers of this YouTube video. It's his ebook. You can uh, text to Sarah on his WhatsApp number. Only text, no calls, please, and uh, no marketing calls, please. Uh, to, so don't disturb sir. But text to him; he will help you out on whatever the ways he, he can by giving you insight on biotechnology related things, career related things and uh, other research related topics and uh, your uh, study material. And uh, also press the thumbs up icon so that this video will be uh, saved on your like folders. Apart from that, you can press the share icon and share this video in your social media post and also to your friends who will be interested on this topic. And now sir will uh, start uh, speaking about uh, research proposal writing. So please go ahead. Well, when it comes to the research proposal writing, as I have uh, already initiated, there has to be a right question for us to get a right answer. That's the key difference between uh, knowledge and uh, wisdom, because wisdom is asking the right question and knowledge is knowing the right answer. So, the term research involves a scientific and systemic uh, way of approaching an aspect. And research is an art of scientific investigation. The purpose of research is to discover answers to questions by applying scientific procedures. When it comes to the types of research, it can be either exploratory or formulating or descriptive or diagnostic or hypothesis testing. To gain familiarity with the phenomena, we call it exploratory or a formulative research. Most of the survey-related uh, research and most of the correlation, regression-related identification through research is formulative research. And to describe a character to a particular individual or a situation, or you want to discuss about a specific group, then it comes as a descriptive research. And then to go ahead of description to determine the frequency of occurrence with something to something else, then you call it a diagnostic research. And then most of the initial stage of research where we start with the hypothesis is called a hypothesis based research where the relationships are being studies. So in hypothesis only, you have the null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, and research methodology mainly focuses on the hypothesis-based research. And then when it uh, comes to analytical research, the researchers use only the facts and uh, they use the evaluation metrics critically to analyze the process. And when it comes to the applied research, they immediately uh, take it uh, to the society or an industrial uh, business organization. So most of the research which is uh, taken care in the research and development will be analytical. And then once uh, the application is confirmed, they can uh, take it to the applied research in the organization. And then gathering uh, knowledge is a basic research. And most of the research agenda starts with the basic research. That's why uh, we call it as literature survey in the initial stage of your uh, PhD. And then since we think about a specific subject related to the institute and, and the relative data associated with the specific subject, it is quantitative research. And uh, the characteristic of the data of quantitation 
with uh, relative measurement is a qualitative research. And then to extend further, the term empirical research, that is the formulation of summation of all related uh, data based on uh, research experiments is empirical. And such research is characterized by experiments over certain variables and uh, deliberately working it to study the effects. So that only most of the thermodynamic based research done in physics are empirical. And then research can be done computationally. That is called as simulation research and it can be done in field or laboratory. In uh, laboratory, if it is only with respect to the glass lights, it's the in vitro research or if it is respect to the organisms in vivo research and uh, the relative field uh, setting is required for both. Else the uh, clinical or diagnostic research come into play and certain people who want to understand the evolutionary biology or uh, the mere uh, data points with the historical timeline perspective. You call it as historical research and uh, certain people will work on the conclusion and the decision oriented research. In rare cases, you can do it. But the best thing I would advise is don't have a conclusion initially because whatever findings you get, whether it's useful or uh, non-useful, ethical or non-ethical, have it with you. If it is non-ethical, no need to report. But it's better not to have a conclusion or a decision in beginning itself. Because if we have a conclusion or de decision beginning itself, then we will do it accordingly. Because by fixing the answer, approaching a problem is not the right way to work out. And the research proposal uh, involves all fields. But for an example, I have taken a medical field. And epidemiological research starts with the statistical data. Suppose the disease comes to India and the same disease comes to US will be uh, different. So we call it as the global epidemiological difference. And the study should have a proper proposal in written format to be carried out. And that's the blueprint to build a plan for the construction. So writing a research proposal is both science as well as an art. A good research proposal is based on scientific facts and the art of clear communication. And writing a formal research proposal should be started uh, by the time one has decided on what uh, topic he needs to perform research. So the basic uh, aspects are objectives, justification, introduction, review of literature, methodology, time frame, and uh, people use gunshot. It's a good way to represent your time frame. Even uh, heat maps, pie charts, and relative charts are being used. And uh, available uh, percent required for research and relative facility. And finally, the budget. Writing a formal research proposal should be stated by the time one has uh, decided. So a research proposal requires uh, relative uh, model working. And first is the objective. That is the critical as well as the pivotal uh, aspect of uh, the research. The objective should be specific, achievable, and measurable. I should not uh, write uh, research proposals like uh, next day I want uh, the country to be number one in everything. Those kind of uh, high level estimate is not always accepted. So too much objectives can be avoided. Specific measurable objective can be taken. If there are more than one objective, you can uh, do it separately also. It's not mandatory that minimum of two objectives should be there. One proper objective with uh, clear outcome and uh, measurable activity is enough. And when it comes to introduction, the proposed problem to be studied should be proper and it should help the reader to get sync with the topic. There are certain introduction which uh, blindly writes the relative points without connecting the topic as well as the consecutive topics. Introduction should be short about one or two pages. The problem should be stated so that uh, it's necessary as well as uh, relevant for the reader. And when it comes to background, the review of literature, 
this section gives the clear understanding to the investigator and the section should have proper quotations reference as well as citations and it's essential uh, to make it coherent with the relative topic and uh, it helps the invigilator to gain knowledge in the field and it also helps him to work with the methodologies that can be applied and the research methodology is a way to solve a research problem systematically it may be understood as the science of uh, studying how research is done scientifically so it's necessary for a researcher to know not only about the research methods and technique but also the methodology scientific way to approach things and researchers are not only needed to calculate the mean and standard deviation they should uh, be in a position to understand the diverse location where the data is taken mere statistics alone uh, will not help uh, getting the proper answer for the research objective it's essential to discuss the procedures clearly and completely with a considerable amount first is the study design that is the way you are going to approach it next is the sample size the number of uh, people you are going to investigate and next is the sample size required and then comes the instrumentation and uh, scientific procedures so study design is a specific plan or a protocol for the study which allows the uh, investigator to translate the conceptual hypothesis into an operational uh, work and the study design should be clear and appropriate to sync with the objective and the study population is essential to get the relative samples in very rare cases randomization can be done because uh, when uh, people work on survey and related studies some randomization is allowed not in all studies and sample size has to be mentioned in the protocol and how they arrive it there are uh, statistical ways to do it to arrive at a proper sample size and the determination of sample size is a mere uh, bargain between the precision and the price the resource and the expenses involved so everything matters in research process design involves the proposal uh, to be adopted uh, specifically for the precise study and a brief description of data is required and how statistics can be used and what significance it has in research should be given and time frame and work schedule the most tricky part the proposal should include the sequence of tasks to be performed and the anticipated length of time required for uh, completion of the required things so the presentation of results can either be tabular or uh, graphical gunshot is one way of doing it there are uh, other uh, ways also to present results flow charts and other diagrams are uh, helpful in highlighting the sequence of relationships in the study and with respect to facilities the proposal should also include the important facilities available in house and the important facilities which can be used nearby as well as uh, if they want any samples to be sent outside and get it tested also all those relative uh, aspects should be discussed in the proposal and then when it uh, comes to personal the primary investigators and uh, co investigators details should be given clearly primary investigator has the prime responsibility because he is the correspondent for various activities and the proposal can include the major and minor roles of the different uh, people the budget translate the project activities into monetary terms and it's a statement on uh, how much money will be required to accomplish uh, the various tasks and then the budget uh, involves major items as salary for staff travel purchase of equipments printing uh, or taking photocopies the consultancy charges and the institutional overhead charges so uh, the major uh, references which i have taken for preparing uh, the slides is from world health organization health research methodology a bible uh, for uh, research methodology works and then oxford textbook for public health okay sir great to know about this and is this is only for phd or for mphil as well 
no sir nowadays even uh, ug people uh, can write mini projects oh, okay sir so uh, the tamil some... nadu government also uh, funds uh, around uh, 60 ug scholars for their uh, mini projects okay sir so like uh, after doing this project will they get a phd or mphil no sir it's not uh, about a phd or an mphil they'll get a certain stipend for completing the project oh, okay sir tamil nadu government i think they give 10000 rupees for uh, ug scholars oh, okay, and around sir. 15 to 20 for pg scholars and the dpt dst as we know it's only from masters and uh, the amount is also triple from compared to tamil nadu government so okay, central sir. government uh, they have okay sir thank Points. you very much for uh, giving a great uh, insight about the research proposal and uh, people as yes. i already told press give us give a thumbs up for this video so that this video will get in saved in your like video or press the save icon and save it to watch later or uh, you can create a playlist with this and also share your valuable comments and questions uh, so in case uh, if sir comes for sir said that he will be coming for other videos as well or uh, in case if sir is unable to come i will check with sir and reply to that and sir's whatsapp number is also there on the more tab so press the more tab and uh, you can get a free textbook from uh, sir as a giveaway for those who watch this video and uh, thanks a lot to sir for this okay sir anything else you like to say to our viewers well the term research is not searching once again it is the way to approach a problem in a scientific way so it's the art of science okay sir thanks a lot for the insight and it's time to say bye bye to you all viewers and uh, special thanks and bye to sir as well bye thank you bye bye